And when he was seven years, seven days old, he took seven steps and said, I alone am the uh, uh, world honored one. And uh, of course, we should all take that literally. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it, it, we are born as Buddha. Everyone, every, because we say we are all Buddha, we are all potentially, uh, we all have the potentiality for Buddhahood. Therefore, each one of us is uh, born as a Buddha. Um, but uh, at the same time, without uh, practice, um, we don't actualize our inheritance. Inheritance is that we are the children of uh, the Buddha. So uh, in order to, then there's the question of, well, if we are Buddha, why do we have to do anything? Like, that was Dogen's question. When Dogen went, uh, he went to China with that question of, um, well, if, well, if we already are born as Buddha, if we already have the Buddha nature, why do we have to do anything? Uh, and so this was Dogen's koan when he went to China. Um, and uh, what he discovered was that yes, we are all uh, we all have the Buddha nature, but unless we do something, unless we turn the wheel, uh, the cart doesn't move. Unless we do, um, practice, uh, uh, our enlightenment doesn't manifest. Our realization does not manifest. Our Buddha nature does not manifest, even though it's there. So it, this is just the way things work in the world, isn't it? We you know, unless we do, we all have the potentialities, but unless we um, uh, 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 do something to um, animate our potentialities, it doesn't manifest. So we call that practice. So uh, um, this is kind of a natural process, I think. A natural process of um, uh, how we become, how we um, manifest our realization, our, our enlightenment, our Buddha nature. We are born, so to speak. <laughs> Buddhism, you know, we, we don't really, we say yes, we are born and we die, but it's simply a process of continuation with certain highlights. One of them is called birth, and the other is called death. The highlight and the low light. <laughs> um, so we're born, and uh, we need to do something. So we look around the world and say, "Well, let's see, I'll do this, or I'll, I can do that." Or we're put into a position where we don't have a choice. Actually, nice to have a choice, but sometimes it's nice. It's good not to have a choice. Because not everybody knows how to choose. Uh, and we get caught in various difficult situations in our life because um, we don't have a direction. So Buddha gives us a direction. And the direction um, that he gives us is that if you follow this path, which I have discovered um, and found to be um, valid, for realizing the meaning of uh, a birth and death, um, then uh, it's called salvation. Uh, that word salvation is usually used in Christianity, but um, it's also Buddhist. And also in Buddhism, uh, it's called something called rebirth. So although we are born into the world, our rebirth is um, our discovery of practice, discovery of what is actually the meaning of our life. So for Buddhist, the meaning of our life is to practice in an enlightened way. 
is an inter, uh, bit um, easier in focus on. Uh, Patrick uh, said something which I will quote to you. He said, <clears throat> think well, there is birth and death for those who keep on saying birth and death is terrible. However, there is no birth and death for those who see birth and death as the life of Buddha. No matter, the matter of birth and death becomes a problem for those who ignore birth and death and are panicked by death. I'm sorry. The matter of birth and death becomes a problem for those who ignore birth and are panicked by death. But there is no birth and death for those who welcome birth and death and are settled in death. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but there is no birth and death for those who welcome birth and are settled in death. So this is uh, an enlightened master's um, understanding, which of course is basically Buddhism. And the heart is in. So uh, it's not a question of is a Buddha uh, um, made or born or made. We're both born and made. We're born with all the potentiality of a Buddha. And through our practice, a Buddha is manifested, unaware. <laughs> if you try to manifest it, it doesn't work. And if you don't try to manifest it, it doesn't work. So <laughs> we just live our life, you know, in, in the, uh, as practice. That, that's our practice, is to live our life as practice. Everything we do can be practice. Suzuki Roshi sometimes says, everything you do is practice, but that, that's because his language is not so good. I had to correct him. I'm, I am at, at present um, editing his talks for a book. And he often says, Every, everything you do is practice. But it, it's, that, it's more like um, practice can be everything you do if it's practice. When you're actually, when it's actually practiced, then everything you do is practiced. But it's not practiced if, if, if everything you do is if you're not practicing. So, mm -hmm. so um, birth is out of our hands, and death is out of our hands. It just happens. But in between is our um, our work. What is what is why why are we in, why is the Buddha why is the Buddha born? Why am I born? Why are you born? Why is anybody born? That's a good question. I'm not going to answer it for you, but I can say that uh, if you follow uh, the path of realization, you will know why you're born and why you, you die. And you realize that um, our attitude is everything. So then there's a question of how do we deal with the present situation that everyone, everyone universally is involved with? Um, you know, we're we're in the age, the the, the 21st century of uh, uh, epidemics. Not only do we have the virus, the 19 virus, which in Africa they also have this um, uh, locust to add to <laughs> their problem. 
the locust, there's a locust infestation. You know, when the locusts pass through a, a territory, it's devastated. That happened last year. Now, there's another pestilence of locusts that is twice as much as it's happening in Africa right now. So this is biblical times revisited. <laughs> The pestilence of, of locusts and the, vir and the viruses and the, uh, and then we have Trump. <laughs> the, the virus of Trump. Mm -hmm. So these are tough times, really tough times. How does the Buddha deal with tough times of this magnitude? So that's that's our problem. How as, as you don't have to think how as a Buddhist, but just how do we? And because we have uh, the Buddhist understanding is a real test of our practice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a real big test of our practice. So what <clears throat> occurred to me this morning was very simple. Just deal with what's in front of us. If we worry about how long this is going to last or when it's going to be over, it's just like sitting zazen, the pain in your leg. Yeah. When is this going to be over? Huh? How long is this going to last? That's, if you start thinking that way, you increase your difficulty. Just how can I take care of this? what I'm doing moment by moment. And how do I make my uh, isolation relevant? How do I turn the, my isolation into something positive instead of something negative? Um, so this um, isolation, fear, <clears throat> Anxiety, disconnection, etc. All those qualities, difficult qualities, we have to deal with. So, <clears throat> I, um, uh, I, I'm very busy. Actually, <laughs> my my day is very busy. Mm -hmm. I, I do a lot of editing, which you know you get. Uh, you can only do that for so long, and then uh, sometimes I play music, and there's so much to read. When I look around, there are all these. I have 10 million records of music I could be listening to. There's so many books I could be reading. You know, there's no reason to get uh, to wonder what to do. And then we have to eat. And we have to put on our masks. Uh, and then there are the questions that are totally unresolved. But if we worry, if we give ourselves over to too much worry, which doesn't mean concern. Concern and worry are two different things. Concern is, you know, yes, we, we can't ignore what's going on. <clears throat> we have to deal with it and figure it out. But worry is um, when we waste our emotional time. And it, um, uh, too much of that blocks our, our clear thinking. So how can we have some clarity, clear thinking for the moment? And um, I, I really appreciate the way that we have been taking care of uh, each other remotely. <laughs> and, trying to figure this out remotely and um, uh, how we can actually take care of, know what's going on with each other so that we can actually respond when there's something that's really necessary to respond to. Anyway, these are all, this is the fifth, right? So why does the Buddha come into the world? 
and how do we uh, manifest our good nature in the world to make some uh, keep the, keep the ship upright. So if you have any questions. Would it be easy to give people where they can find that Nishiari book, a song quote? Is it or is it a, too obscure? Um, <laughs> it's not obscure. It's just, well, someone asked in a little chat window about how we can. Is there a reference for that book, Nishiari book on quote? There might be. Why don't you just look up Nishiari book on, on the, on the, on the internet computer okay. and see if you can find it? Okay. That's the best way, I think. I think it's, and it's probably in the in the three um, uh, uh, the three commentaries on the Genjo Koan. On the Genjo Koan, yeah. I'm sure that's probably where he sits. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's B O K U S A N Boku San. Boku San, yeah. Boku San. So I see a hand. Is it Jarek E? Yes, you got it. Um, yeah, so um, thank you so much for putting this together, and uh, very, very thank you very much for taking the time to explain all of that. Um, I am brand new to Buddhism. I have never looked into it ever. This is my first introduction to Buddhism um, that I've ever experienced, so I'm very grateful for uh, the introduction. I just, um, you know, with, without this happening, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about solitude until it started entering my life uh, like this and it kind of entered my mind that um, Buddhism would probably be a great place to look if I wanted to turn the solitude into something positive. So here I am on the internet and uh, I just have no idea where to start with Buddhism. I've never uh, learned anything other than uh, reading a little bit of Siddhartha in high school and <laughs> Uh, if anybody has any suggestions on where to where to begin to start uh, practicing Buddhism and seeking more about uh, you know solitude, that would be excellent. So, Jin Roshi, um, our practice really is based on our body, <laughs> our physicality, and our our physicality, our emotionality, and our thinking. And uh, when uh, we're isolated like this, uh, our emotionality and our thinking um, kind of take over because we cannot do stuff together physically. Uh, but um, you know, my, uh, my suggestion is this: um, there are if you if you um, use your computer and tune in on um, uh, Zen meditation, it, it's all laid out for you. And uh, how does how to actually do Zen meditation? And that would be a good beginning for you because it, it will cover a, a whole lot of uh, our practice. And then when, if, <laughs> if the, the, um, uh, the, the sickness is over, ever, if it's ever over, then you can actually, you know, participate in uh, the practice with other people. That, that's my sure kind of suggestion. I'll find out what you can, you, can, you can actually learn how to sit. Uh, with uh, the illustration hmm. that, you, that you get from uh, the uh, information on the internet, it's very you find it in various places. So to do that and and just follow the follow the instructions, and that will be a good way to enter. And then when you when people can get together again, uh, you can easily join them or join us. <laughs> That, that great thank you so much i very much appreciate that you're welcome on not sure which john this is 
This is Heiko with a hand raised. I'm, it might be another John. It's John, Heiko. Muted. Okay, all right. Sojin Roshi, can you speak of uh, uh, Buddha's birthday in terms of this life? This, my life, everyone's this present day. I know you did, but can you address how we are born or if there's something about that for us to look into? Yeah, I qualified born. Uh, uh, yes. Um, well, in Buddhist understanding, um, there, there are two births and deaths. One is what we are uh, the usual way we think about birth and death. And the other is that um, birth and death is a continuous process. And our whole life is a continuous process. And the process doesn't begin or end with birth or death. But the, the, birth, the birth and death of this present situation are like markers. They, they mark a certain episode in, in the continuous life of uh, each one of us. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe one more question. Sure. Murray Hopper. Hello, Surgeon Roshi. Um, my question for you is in the process of birth and particularly death. How do we deal with grief and loss? You talked about the process of being in our bodies, emotionality, and thought. Mm -hmm. So how do we use those three to deal with grief and loss? No, uh, we don't let them use us. We don't let emotionality, grief, and uh, uh, I can't remember the loss, loss to um, take over our life. So when you grieve, just grieve 100%. When you have lost, just uh, miss the lost one totally. So if you do whatever you do totally, then you, you can become free from it without um, uh, feeling guilty. You know, it's, it's all based on doing something thoroughly. Then you become one with it. When you become one with it, there's nothing outstanding to interfere. And then you become free from it uh, without losing the value of it. Thank you, Sojin Roshi, and, and thank you all. I'm going to post, there's a new video that was uh, posted by the Soto Zen uh, with uh, Zazen instruction from, from our good friend Galen Godwin, and I'm going to post that link uh, in a moment or two, a video. Uh, first question, you can look at that. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? The guy that asked the first question can, can yes yes yeah. I'm gonna send I'm gonna send I'll send that out it's it's very well done and yeah. what I'd like to invite you all is we're gonna we're gonna mute Sojin's audio and his video perhaps and you can all take a break to get a drink or use the bathroom and we'll return in about five ten minutes and begin the ceremony when Lori and Sojin have walked over to the Zendo. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome.
What is it? Bugs? Great wisdom, beyond wisdom, hard to draw. <laughs> Suffering, oh, sorry to trust, form does not differ from emptiness, emptiness does not differ from form, that which is form is emptiness, that which is emptiness, form, the same is true of feeling, form 
salvation, righteousness, fellowship, all dharmas are marked with emptiness. They do not appear nor disappear, are not tainted nor pure, do not increase nor decrease. Therefore, in emptiness, no form, no feeling, no perception, no formation, no consciousness, no eyes, no ears, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no object of mind, no realm of eyes, no realm of mind, consciousness, no ignorance, and also no extinction of it until and death, and also no extinction of it, no suffering, no origination, no stopping, no past. Mission also no attainment with nothing to attain a bodhisattva depends on pranya paramita and the mind is no hindrance without any hindrance no fears exist far apart from every perverted view one dwells in nirvana the three worlds of Buddhas depend on pranya paramita and attain unsurpassed, complete, perfect enlightenment. Pranya paramita is the great transcendent mantra, is the great bright mantra, is the utmost mantra, is the supreme mantra which is able to relieve all suffering and is true not false. Proclaim the Pranya paramita mantra. Proclaim the mantra that says, Gate, 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 Pure Dharma body, unborn and uncreated, comes forth from great compassion. We pray that great compassion illuminates the darkness of our delusions. <clears throat> On this day of April, we gather to, uh, to offer sweet tea, flowers, candles, water, and cakes, celebrating the birth of our great teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha. In gratitude, we offer the merit of the recitation of the great wisdom beyond wisdom heart sutra. The wonderful Udambara flower bloomed upon this day, and the meaning of this festival is found within its blossom. Even as its twee, sweet fragrance fills the whole universe, so does Buddha Dharma cover the world. The birth of the Shakyamuni brought the sun of hope to a world of darkness, illuminating the whole universe. Shakyamuni was born with the marks of a Buddha, and for a measurable time, he pursued works of great compassion. The Buddha found and translated the causes of suffering. All beings, of this <clears throat> priests to lay persons, praise this magnificent understanding. The Buddha's 300 sermons are for us as rain is for trees and grass, just as rain causes flowers to flourish. So these words touch our hearts at this very moment. The rain of Dharma pours into the lake of kindness. The merit of the Buddha's life may be likened to the wind, which as it bends the grass and fans the leaves, the Buddha is the good seed of the Dharma to take root in the hearts of all people all over the world. Even after 2,000 years, it will continue to do so, not only in this world, but also throughout every world. We, the followers of our great teacher Shakyamuni, bow in gratitude for this kindness and compassion as we celebrate his birthday. 
We pray that Shakyamuni Halo, which is the light of the Dharma, will illuminate the darkness of division for those beings of this world who have not yet heard these teachings. We pray that all beings may be saved and prosper for eternity. We pray that the seeds of Buddhahood will blossom into the flower of enlightenment so its beauty may fill the whole universe. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs>